Hey guys, my name is Andrew Leppard, and today I'm just gonna run through how I set up Ableton start to finish for a weekend. So the first thing that I like to do is just jump into Planning Center and then see what's in there. So basically at this point, I would just go to multitracks.com, search for the songs, see if we already have some of them or buy them if needed, and just download the tracks in the correct key. So as you can see in this folder, I have the four songs that we're gonna be doing this weekend, as well as two other template files that we'll need to create the weekend project file. If at the end of this video, you're interested in using these files to create your Ableton set, I'll provide a link for free in the description to just download these exact files. So my testimony is gonna be the first song, so we're just gonna jump into that one, open that folder up. As you can see in here, there's some album art, some samples. This multi-tracks folder actually has all the audio files that are the tracks themselves. And there's also this Ableton file that just says multi-track. So you can just use the multi-tracks folder itself with the audio files and run those files through any number of programs like QLab or something for a simpler option. Uh, but the way we like to do it, we want the project file for the whole weekend to have each individual song so that we can make any adjustments to what we want. Or as you'll see later, we can tie two songs together so there's no transition time between them. The best way we've found to do that is to just make a slightly modified version of each file and then drag that into the primary file. So I'm gonna show you what I do to modify each song to get it to work together. So jumping into my testimony, we'll just open up this multi-track file. And then down here, you see this buffering sample section that you just gotta let it finish before you start working on stuff or it's gonna really bog down your computer and drive you crazy. You guys ever tried this liquid death stuff? It's literally just mountain water in a can, but something about it, I love drinking these. Anyway, all right, we're done. So now we can get going. So basically, as you can see, there's all these different tracks in here. The first thing we wanna do is add in a tempo file. So what that's gonna do is basically create a file that you put at the very top of the session that tells the tracks what tempo to play at. The reason why this is important is really just for a part that I'll show later when I'm tying two songs together. It makes it so that when you do that, when the next song clicks off, it does it at the right tempo. And the old song that's still playing under it actually transitions to the tempo of the next song during that transition. It makes it work really well. Um, it's not very complicated either, so I just recommend that people do this. The first thing you do is just go into this tempo project folder and then grab this tempo project.als file and drag it into this drop files and devices here section. That will create this little tempo file guy over here. If you double click it, it'll open this bottom section here. And at the top right here, you can see that this song was originally at 97 BPM. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna double click on it to open this up. Then we're gonna click on this BPM section and we're gonna type in 97 and then hit enter. Then we're gonna just drag this tempo section to the top. We are going to select all the tracks. So we're gonna click the top track. Then we're gonna scroll down, hold shift and click the bottom track. Then in this section, we're gonna click click warp and that will make sure that it follows the tempo and then you grab this tempo and drag it to the end of the song just generally making sure that it's roughly the right length and then you can close that up to make it smaller and that section is done the next thing i always do has to do with the locator so as you can see on this top section there are locators for every part of the song to tell you where you're at in the song if you take this and drag it into the big project file that we're gonna do for the whole weekend, those aren't gonna show up. And so what I like to do is just come down to an empty space, right click, do insert MIDI track, drag that back to the top, go one below tempo. And then if you just double click in this front section, it'll create a little bit and drag that to the end. Once you do that, you basically scroll in and on any of the lines where there are these markers, you just click, hit Command E, and you go through the whole section. Once you've done that, go back to the beginning, zoom in a little bit so you can read clearly what all these say, and then do Command R, 
and just type in again what that top section actually says. Then you can just hit tab to go to the next one. Once you've done that, you just zoom out. I like to close this so that it's just smaller. And as you can see, you can now tell where you are in the song without having to have those top indicators. That's basically all I do to an individual song to get it ready to go into the main file. Just to be safe, I like to not write over the original file. So I like to go up to file, save as, and then I would call this my testimony dash E dash. And then I also like to check that it's four, four or whatever it is, just to know what I'm working with Four four dash all caps edited. And then I just hit save and that's that song. Then I just go through the same process for all the songs. And through the magic of editing, all four of those are now complete. I know this probably kind of feels like a lot of work to do for each song, but it honestly, you get really good at it pretty quick and it doesn't take up very much time. I did the other three songs in less than five minutes. So it's a pretty quick process once you get the hang of it. All right, so now the next thing is just to start the actual weekend project file. So we have this weekend template 2022 that will open up. And then we see that it has set for four songs. It's easy to add more or do less, but we almost always do four on a weekend. So that's why I have this set up this way. And then I'm just going to double check again what the songs are in Planning Center. So it's My Testimony E, All Hail King Jesus E. So if you go up to these, right click them, rename, what was it? My, my Testimony E. All, all hail King Jesus E. Then we had nothing else in D and King of my heart in G. So now we have the four songs marked in there so we know which song to place where. And we're just gonna go back to that folder that has all the songs and start with my testimony. So we'll go to this folder with my testimony. We'll grab the edited file and we will drag it into this drop files and devices here. So now it's gonna drop all those in. And as you can see, we have all this stuff already set up in the template. So we've got the tempo markers click and guide as the first four in here. And if you did the other sections right, it'll always be the same where the first four are those. So I just shift click on, I click on the first one, hold shift, click on guide and drag those up to the top and then they're right. Then it's time to start looking at the buses that we're actually sending this to. So if you use this, you're going to have to end up customizing this yourself. We have a lot of channels coming out of Ableton as multi-tracks to the actual console. So we have groups for click track, guide, electric one in stereo, electric two mono, electric three mono, bass mono, piano mono, keys stereo, pad stereo, synth stereo, extra mono, and vocals mono. So we've got a lot of channels going there. You do not have to do this many groups. You can even get away with two or three if needed. You can, you can honestly do left side of stereo for click and guide and right for all the tracks and that also works. But the way we have it set up is this way and these are essentially folders or groups. So if you take these and open them up, you'll see uh, we have four slots for EG1. So I can take up to four things and drop them in there and if I need more, I can just duplicate one of those and it just adds it in. So basically now the process is going through and determining where each of these different files actually go in this whole structure here. As part of that, it's often really helpful to be able to really hear what you're doing. And so we've created a thing where if you select all the tracks, so if you go over to the right side, you click on drums, which is this top one, scroll to the bottom, hold shift. So you've selected all these different ones, hit tab, scroll all the way to the right. And then if you do this, a for sends, 
It'll grab all of them at the same time and it'll send it to a bus that is just set to go into your output. So don't worry about this messing with anything during the actual service. It really shouldn't be a problem, but this allows you to, in this section, still hear what you're doing. So now I'm gonna put headphones on and we're gonna start listening to things and deciding where they go. So in general, we don't use drums in the tracks. So I'm just gonna delete that. Percussion is typically in the extras section. In fact, all these synth and percussion stuff, we put in extra. So I'll just drag those up to extra. So you see this is the extra section. If it's folded down, they're not really there. And then there's, there's five in the extras because there's often a lot of extras. And you can open them up and close them to see what you're doing. But I just know that those go in extras. Same with bass. These two bass ones are gonna go in this bass section. So we're gonna grab those, scroll up, place them there. Acoustic guitar, we don't use in tracks. We always have a real one. So we're just gonna delete that. And then now we see there are five electric guitar tracks, but we only have three electric guitar outputs. So at this point, you really just have to solo each individual thing and kind of decide for yourself where you want them to go. For the sake of this demonstration, it doesn't really matter. So I'm not really gonna go through and perfect it. I'm just gonna kind of drag things to general places that make sense. So I'm gonna take the first two electrics and drag them up to electric one. Then I'm gonna open up two and three so that I have space. I'm gonna do three and four and electric two. And then I'm just gonna do this last one since it's really the big lead line in its own channel. All right, so now I like to just collapse those to make space and we move on. One other thing I like to do is just these extra channels that I know that I'm not using now, I just like to select them and delete them just so I have space to scroll up and down and have it be less crowded and cluttered. So we're gonna take piano, throw it in piano, organ typically goes in synth. Keys are always interesting. They say keys, but half the time they mean pads. So let's see what this one is. Interesting. So yeah, this first one I would consider more of a pad than a keys thing. So we have the pad section for that. We're gonna drop that in there and we're gonna put these other two in the keys. And then we are also going to put the BGVs, choir, all of that in the vocal section. And then once you're done with those, you just delete them. And you'll notice we have two things on the bottom here. We have a pro presenter section and a fade out section. Now this part gets a little complicated and outside of the scope of what I can talk about in this video, but essentially we have it set up so that this little MIDI note at the beginning of each song fires a key to pro presenter up in the production booth and it actually will switch to the right song start the background if there's a moving background behind it or anything like that and just simplifies things a lot for us uh, this fade out section we have basically another midi note that just talks to the computer itself so it's basically creating a loop inside the computer using an iac device i think it's called Okay, an IAC driver. So again, I can't really go into the, how this fully works and how to set it up, but basically you do that. When it gets to that point, it'll tell the computer to hit the stop button after the song. So it's really, really helpful. It's not necessary if, if, you, know, if you have someone whoever's running it, they can just hit stop after the song's done, but this just ends the song and makes it stop no matter what. All right, that song is done, ready to go. Uh, now I'm just gonna really quick put the other ones in there and then I'm gonna show you how to tie the first two songs together and also how to use the markers to easily start your songs in the right place. Oh, one thing really quick. When you import the next song, you have to click on the top one, come down to the bottom one, hold shift or press shift, click, and then drag it over all to the start of the next section. 
That way it just is easier to work with. From there, you just do exactly the same thing. So now all the songs are in and I'm just gonna show you how I would tie together the first two songs. They're both an E, so that makes things really easy sonically, um, but I'll just show you what I do here. So the first thing I do is I would find a good out point. So I kind of listen to the end of the first song and see when that transition would probably be best. Ending. First of all, I'm gonna get rid of this fade out section because we don't want it to stop if they're fading into each other. Uh, then I'm gonna go over to the All Hail King Jesus part and I'm gonna select everything underneath the guide and click. And then I'm gonna press delete there, just between the beginning of the count off and before verse one. This works on almost every song. Occasionally there's a song that has a slight ramp in before that and you can work with it if that's needed but typically that section isn't needed at all. So then we're just gonna grab the whole song. So we're gonna zoom out, grab the whole thing. And the first thing we're gonna do is just move it closer so that we can zoom in and really see what we're working with. So what we're gonna try and do here is basically just drag it so that when that verse one starts is the very ending of that last song. So we're gonna try and match there to there. So we're gonna drag it and you can kind of see where the V of verse is the beginning section, it should be there. Perfect. So you see how these this first song's tracks keep going and then it just jumps right over into verse. And so I'm going to get that. So I actually moved this pro presenter thing that changes the background to hit right when the next song starts so that right when you like would start singing, the screens all change and everything. So let's see how that sounds just to check. So. Ending. One, two. And now it's counting in. Verse two, three, yep, four. Perfect. So there, see how there's there's no gap between when those two songs start and end, and so there's not that awkward silence between songs when everyone's like switching stuff and doing things. If your band is playing in the same key and they're not moving instruments or anything, this can really make your service between songs feel a lot more cohesive. Of course, I'm also gonna grab this marker and just get it right there so that it looks all pretty. Uh, just so you know the purpose of the markers, um, if you press this little key button, you'll see that each of these have numbers on them. And what that means is basically if you click on it, and then you press a key on your keyboard, so that one's four, it will make it so that it will jump to that point if you press that key. So that way, in a service, all right, song one, press one on the keyboard, hit space bar. One, It's playing two. the first song. Vamp, two. If you hit, so you wouldn't wanna hit two because that one is automatically gonna go there, but we put it there just for rehearsal sake so that if you are just rehearsing and you know what, you just need to run that second song again. You press two, hit one, play, it's gonna do that. Two, it's gonna show that transition section. Verse two, but three, four. There's the second song. And three and four, same idea. All right, so we are basically completely done with this. We just need to save and then also one final step. So we're gonna do file, save as, save it wherever you want. I like to do, this is nine, eight, 22, weekend, and there you go. And then I also like to go up to file, save, or collect all and save, and then hit okay with the default things that it asks for. What this is gonna do is gonna make it so that wherever the files are that you dragged into here, it is going to collect them into the actual project file and make it so that you can't basically ruin it. Because what you really don't want to happen is you make this on say a Wednesday or a Thursday, you get to service on Saturday or Sunday, you plug it in, you get ready to go, and you've realized you've accidentally deleted files and there are missing files, so it shows where they are, but they don't actually play anything. This will prevent a lot of that. It's also really helpful if you're creating it like I am on a different computer than the actual playback rig. So when you do it this way, you can actually just have that Ableton project file and save that to a flash drive or Dropbox or anything 
If you drag that file onto any other computer with Ableton, it should just open up with all the files there and you shouldn't have any issues. You do need to make sure that this buffering sample section completes before you close it after you do that though, because it's right now copying all the files into the new location. And that's it. That's how I set up Ableton on a weekly basis. There are some other details that I can get into if you want down in the comments. We typically use a stream deck to fire and stop all these tracks. We found that that's a lot more reliable than anyone just hitting like, you know, song one, song three, song five on a keyboard. This way it just has a button on there that says song one. And when you press it, it jumps to song one and it plays it. So there are a couple little tricks that we have that I'm happy to talk about. But in general, this is what I do on a weekly basis. Like I said earlier, if you want the files for the tempo project file and then the actual weekend service file, I'm more than happy to provide those for free. There's just gonna be a link down in the description where you can click that and download them. But other than that, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later.